Hello, my name is Keith. I'm, I'm the author of Chibi Akamas, and um, today I'm going to be showing you myself editing a sprite for the ZX Spectrum. Now, here I am in um, Krita, which is a free Photoshop-like program, and I'm editing this Amstrad CPC graphic for um, the ZX Spectrum. Now, the trick here is that the um, Amstrad CPC is a four-color system. The ZX Spectrum can only show two pictures two colors in an 8 by 8 pixel square of screen area. Now the Spectrum has no sprites so um, it's not a case of that sprite memory, that's actually screen layout. Um, this this picture is actually shown on the um, the game over screen. Uh, it show, it's always shown in the bottom left hand corner and uh, as you can see it's kind of the main character. She's kind of shrugging and she actually insults the player saying the player didn't play well enough. It's a, it's a kind of joke screen. So what I'm doing here is I'm redesigning the sprite for a two color system. Um, I'm editing it here in Krita. I will later move this file over to um, my own graphic editor, which uh, I wrote myself. It's, uh, the, the one I wrote is only very, very basic. It can only do really simple pixel editing. So. Um, more complex things in the early work I do I do in this um, Krita program and then I move to my own editor for uh, assigning the colour attributes to the 8x8 pixel blocks and things like that. Now um, my program will treat anything that's not black as being basically coloured and then later I apply the colour attributes to each 8x8 pixel block. The, um, the Spectrum has seven colours and um, it can have a, a foreground and a background color in each eight by eight pixel square. It can also have a it, that that square can also be dark or light. So you can have light, you can have bright white and bright red, or dark white and dark red in a square. But you can't have bright red and d dark white in a square. They, they've both got to be bright or dark. So that that's a kind of odd limitation that um, I often forgot in the early days. So what I'm basically doing here is I'm um, I'm sort of replacing any of the colours that have been used for sort of shading. You can, you can see this cyan I'm removing around the face. Um, the, the character's face is white and I originally used cyan just to sort of give it a, a darker shade for the sort of... Um, for the, the areas of the face that would be in shadow. Now the, the spectrum can't do that so I'm replacing them with a checkerboard pattern. I should point out at this um, stage I'm no expert on ZX Spectrum graphics. I, I'm learning this myself at the moment and so you, please don't take anything I'm doing here as uh, being the best way to design Spectrum sprites. It's really just the best way I've learned so far to design Spectrum sprites. sprites. So um, if if you're watching this, I'm hoping you're doing so as as someone who's curious to learn what it's like moving from the Amstrad to the Spectrum and not looking for a masterclass in Spectrum graphics design because I'm afraid I can't give it. So anyway, you can see here um, my previous replace of the um, colours has actually um, lost some of the shading around the face so I'm just retouching it here um, and you can, see, you can see I've already sort of um, isolated the the eyes so that they're separated from the face because as I said before any color that's not black will later be basically replaced with white so um, and you'll, you'll see what I mean in a moment when, when I move this over to my other program but um, I'm just sort of touching up the last bits of the face here just drawing around the eyebrows so the eyebrows are nice and clear um, and um, then we'll see, we'll see later on what happens when we move to the actual um, sprite editor now the sprite editor I mentioned earlier it's something I wrote myself in C Sharp and it was designed specifically to work with Amstrad MSX and Spectrum sprites so it, it's it's very simple but it's far more specialist than um, Krita and um, it's helping me work very quickly with all three systems. So we're pretty much done here and all I do now is copy it into the clipboard and then paint it. So here we go in my uh, this is the program I've written and you'll just see here I'm loading up a, an Amstrad CPC palette because I'm about to paste in from the clipboard and it matches to the palette that's current in the system. So here we go. So just paste in from the clipboard and this brings in the data that you just saw. Um, and now at the moment it's being shown as an Amstrad CPC sprite but if I go to the settings here and change it to Spectrum then you'll see when we go back it's now black and white. So what I do next is I use this ZXN and I change it to ZXB which is ZX Spectrum background and now I'm going to paint in the background colours so that I can um, I can sort of design the um, graphic as it's going to appear on the Spectrum. So uh, you can see here we're just um, 
filling in the areas around the outside and then we're going to start deciding what we're going to do in the middle and how we can make this sprite work well within the ZX Spectrum's limitations. Now I should point out if I was drawing this from scratch then I would actually design the sprite better around the 8x8 pixel blocks of the Spectrum. However this is a graphic that's been copied from the Amstrad CPC for speed and also um, the game over screen is quite full of text so read a heavy redesign of the graphic to make it use more space in other words by extending the border into its own separate 8 by 8 pixel block isn't going to be possible or at least isn't going to be viable within the time constraints I'm trying to work under so um, we've kind of got to make the best of a, a bad situation with that border if you see as I'm colouring it it's colouring the hands and the hair so um, that's putting me under some under some unfortunate limitations here. As you can see, I can't have the hands white without colouring the border white, so um, got to make some tough choices here. And also you'll see I've tried to shade the um, the eyes and it shades the cheeks at the same time. And um, trying to work out what to do with these kind of problems is very much, in my opinion anyway, a lot of what working with Spectrum Graphics is like. And depending on how good the um, choices and compromises you make are um, makes a big difference to how good the result is I think and hopefully um, I'm learning at least or have learned or will learn maybe um, I'm learning how best to make um, the spectrum work well because if if you're very clever with it the spectrum can actually look better than the Amstrad CPC because the spectrum can have sort of seven colours on screen whereas the Amstrad CPC in mode 1 can only have four but it does take um, some quite clever tricks and strange compromises and here is the compromise I'm making here as you can see before I, I'm unable to have the hands coloured white and without colouring the border so what I'm doing is I'm redesigning the graphics so that the, the character's hands are actually going to reach outside of the border it, it kind of reminds me of the Looney Tunes where when Bugs Bunny would sort of reach over that reach out of the shield and things um, so sh she's going to um, she's going to reach outside the frame and that's going to give me an excuse to have the frame to delete the frame and that will allow me to keep the hands white but without colouring the frame so it's kind of a trick and how, how you sort of design the graphics to work around those limitations can, can it, it's one of these things where you have to make compromises but sometimes they can give give the um, graphics their own unique quirk just because of the, the choices you were forced to make so um, we're, we're going to make the best of it that we can so as you can see here I'm just um, deleting the hand and I'm going to redraw it into that um, new area that I've deleted from the border now um, when it comes to the spectrum graphics um, obviously as you see here I'm, I'm deleting um, I'm deleting the area of the border to make way for the hand and what I tend to find is um, any time you've been forced to, to make those kind of choices it's best to kind of blur the area in between so um, rather than sort of having a hard cut off of the border you can see I've kind of sloped it off and um, if you look at the sort of hands at the bottom here they're gonna have to be pink because I can't make the same choice down there um, but what I tend to do is whenever um, whenever I'm forced to sort of end something like the border I, I sort of slope it off or whenever something's the wrong colour I tend to give it that sort of dithered checkerboard sort of pattern just to sort of make it darker or less visible than it should be because I need to draw the hands because it, it wouldn't I need to draw the, the arms but they're going to have to be pink so I kind of draw them a bit vaguely as if they're in shadow so that it's not as obvious that they're the wrong colour now um, the, Ch the Chibiko character her eyes are supposed to be red and um, that it's very rare I get the opportunity to colour them red because on the Amstrad CPC I just don't have enough colours and on the ZX Spectrum uh, the eyes are usually so small that they're nowhere near 8 by 8 pixel blocks so this is one rare opportunity where um, where I'm able to actually colour them red so as you can see I'm going to actually redesign the character's face a little bit just so that the, the eyes are now all in one 8 by 8 block and the cheeks aren't coloured as well um, as I said before uh, you, you can see the spectrum colour palette at the top you've got black, blue, red, pink, green, cyan, yellow and white and as I said you can actually have all of those on screen um, 
without any problem unlike this this sort of Amstrad CPC's four color palette this doesn't doesn't have any limitation to how many of the colors you use on screen but it does have the limitation you can only use two of them in one eight by eight square and also that um, they can both be bright or they can be both dark so um, slightly strange limitation there um, now you can see here I'm sort of re redrawing the mouth and um, what I'm doing there at Ideally, of course, I'd have the mouth, the um, the tongue red as well, but um, that's not really a priority for me in this um, in this screen. Um, the the more important thing that I'll come to later is um, I need I need the character to have a sort of slightly satirical, despairing expression on her face, um, and part of that's going to be done with the eyes. But another important part of that is the mouth. So I'm I'm drawing the mouth and tongue to. Um, to, to sort of convey that expression, not to to actually allow me to colour it in any different colour, but uh, because of the um, beca because I've I've had to sort of redo the face with the checkerboard, it's difficult to maintain that expression. Now you'll see here I'm just sort of shading around the um, the eyes here. As I said before, ideally this would be white, but it's actually pink. So all I'm doing is I'm giving it that sort of checkerboard dither just to um reduce the emphasis on it so that the fact that it's the wrong color isn't isn't just isn't so noticeable isn't quite so ugly so it's, a, it's just a, a a sort of compromise there and then i'm just redesigning the eyes a little bit to um, balance them out uh, and get that one last remaining line of white pixels out of the actual main um main eye uh, just just makes it look a little bit nicer and just um hides the um, limitations of the spectrum there Ho hopefully when the viewer sees this they won't realize that that limitation kicked in and that it, the, the, the um, choices were made to avoid those limitations and hopefully it will just look like a nice colorful graphic so anyway as you can see here um, things are coming on a little bit better now just finishing off a few touches around the mouth here just to just to try and get um, the face to have the, 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 the expression I want here. And then um, just got to do some finishing off on this. You, you'll see there's some glitches in the background there. That's actually the um, video capture program. I used Cam Studio Portable for this. I'm not particularly used to using it yet. So um, I've not got the setting quite right yet. Uh, it's, that's not a glitch within the, within the C Sharp program. That's actually just a recording program problem. So please ignore that. I'm sure you've probably guessed that the sort of checkerboard pattern in the background is the 8x8 eight eight pixel blocks just highlighted so that they're very clear. So all I'm doing here is drawing the fingers back in now that I've redrawn the hands and just trying to make everything look as good as I can. Uh, if if I was trying to do any serious graphic redesign, I would actually copy this back into Kriter because, as I said, Kriter's a very good package, whereas this sprite editor of mine is really only a sort of pixel editor and a colouring tool. So it's not really suited for sort of complex graphical work. So now I'm just um, shading in the borders here. What one thing um, you might realise uh, if you've seen this screenshot later, you'll notice that this is actually um, I stopped recording this video before I um, completely finished the graphic. Uh, the final version, the top and right borders of the frame I coloured back in bright pink and the bottom and left I left dark pink which gave it a nice 3D effect but um, I'd stopped doing this recording after um, after I did that so it, you, you won't see that in this editing. Now all I'm doing here is um, touching up the hair a bit with a few highlights. Uh, in On the Amstrad CPC Plus version and in the, the bigger graphics you'll see that Chi Chibiko's hair actually does have some highlights in it uh, and on the spectrum often I'm forced to put some in because the hair will sort of um, conflict with other parts of the face or other objects in the scene. So I tend to sneak a few white blobs in there here and there even when I don't have to just to sort of um, obscure the fact when I'm forced to because it just makes the character look more consistent and um, as I said the, the character was actually supposed to have a few highlights in her hair anyway so it kind of works so again just um, finishing a few touching touch-ups here I'm just making a few corrections and then saving the file here just so that I can edit it again later if I need to now, um, the, the, the graphic itself will actually be um, exported as a, a run length encoding file. These are actually saved as assembly language and I have my own RLE decoder that I wrote that these will be piped into. So when I use that RLE 
tool from the um, ZX menu, it actually saves to the clipboard. And then what I'll do finally is I'll paste it into my assembler. But just for an example, I'll paste it here. Now, this is the black and white bitmap data that's that large first chunk. And then I'm going to go again and I will make a second one, which is the um, color chunk. Uh, because on the ZX Spectrum, they're actually in two different positions in memory, so I kind of do them in two separate stages. Well, I hope this was um, interesting to you, and if you want to see more, then please consider following me on Patreon, because I'm posting regularly on there. And if you like this video, then I will do some more. I, I hope it was of some interest and you enjoyed listening to me ramble on. Well, thanks. Thanks a lot.